And if you need to know, yes, I realize Smallfoot is not a Disney film. You gotta go to a different spot of the set and then it looks weird if there's one poster that's off. I'm sorry, there's nothing that can go here at the moment. I don't really have anything to go there. Here's another discussion for this week. It's been a while, but I just wanted to make the announcement that, yes, I did in fact just purchased three years of Disney Plus. I know what you're thinking. Um, are you crazy? Do people normally buy three years of a streaming service before even testing it out? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever thought about the idea of buying something that is guaranteed to be amazing? Like, like say if you could buy three years worth of, of a great burger for a lesser price than to just buy that same amount of burger in the course of three years. And you, you know you're gonna enjoy it no matter what. Maybe you've never had this specific kind of burger before, but it's made by a company you trust. And you know they're gonna do something great. You know you're gonna like it. Or even if you don't like it, you know you're gonna keep supporting it anyway because you're just a mindless sheep at this point. Just forever chained to the global capitalistic empire that is, well in this case, Disney. And, you know, if I really wanted a three year supply of burgers, I guess it would be five guys, but yes, Disney Plus, I did it. There's gonna be a lot of new stuff and a lot of old stuff on it, but at the moment, it doesn't seem like there's as much as what Netflix can offer, even if a lot of old programming from other studios gets taken off of Netflix. I mean, they're already talking about getting rid of Friends in the Office, but I don't know, going through Netflix, I start to realize they have a lot of really good documentaries and stand-up routines on there, so I don't see Netflix uh, failing too much for a while, but Disney Plus is gonna be a hit just based on that price. And for the kind of content they're gonna have on Disney Plus, they already have a bunch of stuff announced, either coming from the likes of Pixar, Lucasfilm, the Muppets, or even 20th Century Fox. They're talking about doing a Diary of a Wimpy Kid continuation, a Night at the Museum reboot, a reboot of Three Men and a Baby, of The Parent Trap, of actually doing a Sister Act 3, and reimaginings of The Sword in the Stone and Peter Pan. They also have a couple movies announced that they've thrown trailers out for already, and that are gonna be available on the day it launches. One of the very first movies they're gonna have is Lady and the Tramp. Which, I mean, what do you kind of expect with that? It didn't hit theaters for a reason. There's a reason that they decided to instead put this on Disney+. Plus. It's the lesser of the animated remakes slash reboots slash reimaginings that they've been doing the last couple years. So if this wasn't good enough for theaters, I kind of question it. But based on the trailer alone, I kind of thought it already looked better than, say, The Lion King especially with the effects and the personalities of the dogs, so I don't know. To me, it still has a chance of not being the worst animated remake this year. We also have Noel coming out, which is going to star Bill Hader, so you already know I love it, and Anna Kendrick, which means I'm going to love it even more. It's a Christmas movie, so uh, this movie has everything I love. This movie was originally supposed to be released in theaters, and it has the production uh, level of a theatrical release. I don't know if this is what we're going to expect from all of the Disney originals, since right now they're just taking things that were meant for theaters and just releasing them on Disney Plus instead. But hey, maybe all the movies will have a budget like this. They also have a movie called Togo coming out, which is going to star Willem Dafoe, which gets me interested. It's going to be about sled dog racing, so they did Iron Will. They did Snow Dogs. I guess they're just continuing the trend. Oh, who could forget Eight Below? I'm sorry. <laughs> the best of all those, actually. Eight Below is the best one. But last but not least, we will be getting the Phineas and Ferb movie. Something that was originally announced to be in theaters a couple years ago, and it kind of just went away. I'm glad that it finally came about again, because as a big fan of the Phineas and Ferb TV show, of course I wanted to see a movie. Uh, so, of course I'm going to see that the first day it airs. I'm excited for that. But among the things that they're releasing as movies, I think people are way more excited for what's going to be TV shows. This is where we're starting to get the real good stuff. Stuff like High School Musical, The Musical, The Series. Which I originally thought was supposed to be a documentary about the actual school in Salt Lake City. 
and about those kids actually doing the production, but I guess it's supposed to be a mockumentary in the style of The Office about that same premise. So it's not real, but they're making things up and it's supposed to have the same kind of humor and drama of the High School Musical series, I guess? I don't know, as a fan of, well, High School Musical 3 anyway, uh, I like the first one fine enough and the second one's garbage, but I I'm fine with them bringing it back in some kind of way, but I don't know if this is the best route to go. The trailer just gave me the vibes of a really bad looking Disney Channel show. And, I don't know, we'll see what they end up doing with it. Maybe it'll be entertaining and maybe it'll be surprising like the third movie. Uh, I'm not expecting much out of this, but as a fan, for nostalgic purposes, I guess I'll check it out. I think the thing most people are excited for right now is The Mandalorian, which is being produced by Jon Favreau and is gonna star greats like Warner Herzog and Bill Burr. When they first bought Star Wars, Disney announced that they were gonna make a Boba Fett movie. After Solo didn't do too well, it, the plans for that kind of went away, but it seemed like before the plans had already gone away, we didn't really hear much more about the Boba Fett movie other than hey, we're gonna do it, and then The Mandalorian was created. So I think a lot of what was gonna be in that Boba Fett movie is just going to the series instead, and if it ends up being Boba Fett or not, I'm not sure. I have a feeling he's gonna show up in some capacity, but I don't know if the main character himself is supposed to be Boba Fett. I also like the fact that they're keeping the two eight episodes. They're also gonna be releasing the episodes on a weekly basis, kind of like what Hulu has done for select TV shows. So yeah, I think both of those are excellent plans. Lesser episodes in a series so it doesn't drag out too long and releasing it weekly so people don't binge it in one day and just forget about talking about the series. They're also doing Diary of a Female President which is going to be centered around the 12 year old girl who ends up becoming the president or she wants to become the president. I'm not quite sure. They also have Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7. I've heard a lot of hype for this show and as someone who hasn't seen the entire Clone Wars TV show, uh, I think it's a perfect time to finally uh, catch up with the entire series and then see Season 7 get released. Hopefully there'll be enough time between that. I don't think this show is premiering the exact same day as Disney+, Plus, so I'll give it a shot. And then we're getting into some of the different uh, Marvel shows they're going to be doing. They have The Falcon and Winter Soldier, which is going to feature two of the well, side characters anyway from the Captain America series. I'm a big fan of Sam Wilson and I'm really hoping Bucky Barnes gets expanded storyline material or character because I feel like he's been kind of a waste so far in the Marvel Cinematic Universe or disappointment to say the least, I guess. They're also gonna be doing a Loki TV show. Uh, a lot of people are big fans of Tom Hiddleston. I've never been the biggest fan of the character, but like I said, I'm excited to see what they're gonna do with the show, given that it's actually taking place within uh, the events of Endgame. So these events technically are gonna take place in a different timeline if I'm following their version of parallel dimensions that they set up in Endgame. Or maybe they'll ignore that, I don't know. Who knows, maybe they'll explain it more. WandaVision, which is gonna have a 50s aesthetic to it, which is apparently based on one of the comics. Uh, of course I'm excited for that. Hawkeye, which is gonna focus on Jeremy Renner's character, someone who I wasn't a big fan of until Endgame, and gotta say, I got really into the character there, so now I'm excited to see more of him. And they also have the What If TV series, which is gonna talk about different uh, parallel dimensions, I guess, or different ways events in the Marvel Cinematic Universe could have played out. They've really teased the idea of Peggy Carter becoming Captain America instead of Steve Rogers. Uh, the animation style especially is getting me excited because it has a 2D vibe to it. They also really last second announced they'll also be doing Moon Knight, Miss Marvel and She-Hulk. Uh, all these characters I don't really know too much about. We're getting to that point now where my knowledge of Marvel Comics is getting lesser and lesser. But like I said, the more the merrier. You know what show I'm actually really kind of most excited for though? Is Monsters at Work because it's a continuation of the Monsters Inc. universe and yeah, I don't know. I just want, I think that's a property that they could have done a hell of a lot more with than what they ended up doing. We got two movies and a couple shorts out of it, but to be honest, 
that whole idea to me is still so interesting. They're also doing a Cassian Andor series, uh, which is gonna center around the character from Rogue One. I'm guessing before he died on that planet? Or did he die on that planet? Maybe he survived, because all we ever saw was them hugging at the end and then a giant flash, but maybe they survived the explosion somehow. Nah, it's probably gonna take place before Rogue One. Lizzie McGuire Season 3. I don't remember Lizzie McGuire that much. It was a little before my time, and even then when I did see episodes, they were very far and in between. I remember seeing the movie, and I've seen it again recently, and it hasn't aged too well. I wish they would bring back Phil of the Future, or even Stevens, honestly. <laughs> or Kim Possible, bring that back! And because they own the property, the 20th Century Fox, they of course announced a Love, Simon TV show. I say of course because, I, I don't know, it was, a, it was a minor success, but I wouldn't say it was such a big success that it's in need of a TV show immediately. But given what the movie was about and that they could probably explore a character like that in a larger form, you know, just to kind of diversify the streaming service, I completely understand why they're doing it. but. This is the case where I think they could have just done something original. We also have seen a lot of other stuff that they're going to be doing as documentary series or reality shows. They got Encore, they got Marvel's Hero Project, they have Jeff, The World According to Jeff Goldblum, which I think is a great idea for a show. They also are going to be bringing some shorts to it, like uh, Forky Asks a Question and Spark Shorts, which are both from Pixar. And they're also going to be doing the making of Frozen 2 directly on Disney+. Plus. So they're going to basically be releasing Blu-ray special features, but on the streaming service. Kind of makes me wonder how soon is it going to be before Blu-ray starts really becoming irrelevant. They also announced some shorts involving the Muppets, which I'm happy that Disney never really gives up on the Muppets, even though time and time again they haven't been too financially successful for them, at least not the size of something like Marvel. And they also announced One Day at Disney, which is gonna be, I guess, a PR campaign for the studio to show, hey, who cares if we don't pay our employees enough and that they can't make ends meet and that they're living in a car. I don't know, it makes me feel dirty for buying the service for over three years. I mean, I'm just giving more money to this company that, hey, Bob Iger, uh, heard you'll be resigning soon. How about uh, a CEO replacement? My name's Justin, I don't have too much experience, but I'm thinking I can offer quite a few different things. I'm of course excited for the streaming service, so Tell me what your thoughts are. Uh, what shows are you most excited for? What do you think of the streaming service so far? The different pricing they're gonna be going about with it? The design, are you thinking it's gonna go anywhere? Or are you expecting Disney Channel level of stuff? And I, I'm not using Disney Channel as a completely terrible adjective, but I am saying that the quality of Disney Channel is usually of a lesser degree compared to everything else that Disney puts out. Uh, so yeah, just let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for watching. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters. For only $7, you can get your own monthly movie review. Ask me to review anything I haven't already. There's also other perks like blogs, exclusive videos, and early access. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thanks so much for watching this video.